to continue to move from the hearts of the people, God. We ask you to bless them. We ask you to bless the leader that you've placed over this people, God, that they will continue to follow them as he follows you, God. We thank you now, God, as the months are starting to draw nearer, God. We thank you. You brought us safely out of August, Lord, as we go into a new month of September, God. We ask you to give us a fresh new beginning, God. All of the things that we dealt with last month, we leave it that last month, God. And give us the strength to be able to forge forward, God, in the name of Jesus. That everything that
Hebrews 10, 25 says, Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as in the manner of some, but absorbing one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. With this in mind, uh, let it be said that the Psalms tells us exactly what we should bring with us when we come to church. This morning, if you don't mind, I'll just like to take a few moments and we can explore this thing together and make sure that after today, when I come to church, I bring the right thing with me. But the first thing that you see here in the text is you have to bring with you the right spirit. Uh, since the first bringing the right spirit uh, can happen in a few different ways, uh, the first type of spirit you need to bring with you is a shouting spirit. Amen. We are told that the opening of the text here is to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. We break this down and we can see what it is that David has commanded us to do. The first thing we see here is the word make. This word make means to make music. It is used to refer to singing and to the songs. Then there's the word joyful. This word means to give a public confession of the attributes of God and his work. Thirdly, noise means to raise a shout. But this refers to a ringing cry, a cry almost piercing of the eardrum. So when we put all these things together, we can see that the psalmist is calling on the people of God to raise the praise unto the Lord that is from the bottom of our hearts. This is the challenge of participating in public praise of God for who he is and what he has done. Psalm 40, one tells us that the Lord has done things for us and saved us. He's put a new song in our mouth. It's our job to give them praise. So when we come into church, that's what we came here to do. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord. Now, I don't know about you, but my noise might not be as joyful to everybody else. I might not be able to sing like mother that said, come on in the room, but every chance I get, I'm going to lift up my voice and, and make a joyful noise unto the Lord. I don't care if you don't like it, I don't care if it don't sound good to you, baby. I'm not singing to you, I'm not trying to impress you. The text says, make a joyful noise unto who? Unto the Lord. So, the next type of spirit, uh, we got to come in with a servant spirit. Uh, the word serve means to be in bondage to. It refers to doing whatever the master tells us to do. It means that we are to be at his beck and call. When we got saved, we became the Lord's promise. First Corinthians 6 and 20 says, Therefore, we do not know what he tells us to do without question or hesitation. Uh, some folks don't like this already because we don't like people telling us what to do. Uh, well, if you don't like that, then you're not going to like to see that uh, he tells us to serve them. Not only to serve him, but to serve him with gladness. Uh, I remember growing up, my mother would tell us to do something in it. If we walked away too rough, you know, she didn't like it. She called us back, and you know, and I, I was going to do what you said, too. No, 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 but don't walk away from me with an attitude, you know. And that's what he said. He said, if you want to serve me, you have to serve me with what? With gladness. Gladness is a little word that refers to mirth. This word uh, we don't use common. It's not a modern term, but it's, it's, it's to be glad, accompanied with laughter. This verse is telling us that when we serve the Lord, we should do it so that we are filled with love. Regardless of what it is, we are excited to do it. We are filled with mirth every time we get a chance to come to church. The word gladness is interesting because it's carrying a word like being wide-eyed and a big brain. It's, it's like when a child is getting ready to open up gifts on Christmas, how happy that child is and how excited that child is, that's the way we should come into church serve. But the problem is we want to serve the Lord with a with an attitude. We want to serve the Lord with the with the with the mean spirit. Maybe you can't serve God with an attitude. If you're gonna be an usher and you're gonna stand on the door and I walk in there, I want to see you smile. I want I want you to tell me good morning, welcome to Trinity. I want to see you not y'all y'all feel us not smiling, but if you go Servant 
servants here. And the text goes on to say, you got to have a singing spirit. Here it is. So to a portion of the Lord, God will sing. So the word refers to the great cry and shout of joy. Our hearts should be filled with the wonder of who God is and what he's done for us. We are allowed in his presence, and when we get here, our innermost being should burst out of song. The first two verses tells us that we should come to church with the right spirit. Now that we understand that the right spirit, what's the next thing we should have, church? We should bring the right submission. Somebody say submission. Submission. Well, y'all don't like that word. We're going to be on the this thing. Uh, the first thing that we should submit to is we should submit to the person of God. We are told to know that he is God. This word means that we are to make a distinction. We should know that he alone is God. Loving, he, he, we have to nail that down in our lives that God is God. Uh, God is God whether you want him to be God or not. God is God whether you believe that he is God or not. God is going to always be God. And it's better for us to just understand and accept the fact that he is God. Life would be so much better if we just simply understood and accepted the fact that we serve an almighty God. He doesn't need us to do anything. He doesn't need us to be powerful. He is God all by himself. He is superior. He is the only person that is in charge. The problem is, is that when we come to church, we just want to serve God any old kind of way. And we don't want to set the difference and understand that he is in charge. God is the boss. Uh -huh. This ain't your church. I know you've been here a hundred years. This ain't your church. I know your mama was a trustee, your daddy was a deacon. This ain't your church. Uh, God is in charge. You submit to the person of God, then we have to submit to the purpose of God. We are reminded of what we are and why we are. Text says, where is he that hath made us? This word simply means to take some material and fashion it to make something new out of it. You see, God took the clay that was us and formed us to be new creatures. And all of this he did to get his power and glory out of it. Regardless of what we are this morning, uh, what we were made to do was to serve God. Without him, we are nothing. We need to realize that this morning that God saved us for a purpose. He didn't just redeem us and keep us out of hell just for no reason, but he redeemed us so that we could uh, turn around and worship him. Uh, so I don't know, sometimes we forget why we got saved and we, we get it twisted, but we, 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 we have a purpose by what we do. Uh, we don't just come here Sunday after Sunday just out of ritual. We don't just come here Sunday after Sunday just to look good and just sit there. If you come here on Sunday morning and you don't lift your hands and give God some praise, baby, you ain't doing what you was created to do. We submit to the purpose of God and then we submit to the promise of God. We are his people and the sheep of his passion. The statement simply reminds us we belong to him, and just like a shepherd looks after the welfare of the sheep, our Lord looks after the welfare of us. We are in his care. David had this nailed down in his own life. For in Psalm 23, he wrote and said that the Lord is my shepherd. It is he who would forever translate this scripture for us to realize that I don't have to worry about anything because the shepherd is going to always take care of the sheep. Yes. The problem is that we have not learned that we need to just simply trust the shepherd. Uh, the shepherd is going to always do his best for the sheep. Uh, uh, for we see the 23rd Psalms, he has a rod and a staff. So every once in a while, he's got to hoard off some people, hoard off some things. But then sometimes he's got to hook us and put us back in. I don't know about you, but I thank God that every once in a while I go a little too far that the shepherd is there to pull me that thing. So we're going to practice up quickly. 
If you bring the right spirit, bring the right submission, then we have to bring the right sacrifice. Tabernacle on temple days, the priest has entered the presence of the Lord, you had to bring the right sacrifice. In order to bring the sacrifice, something had to die. Hebrews chapter 9 and 7 says, We thank God that we do not have to offer our blood sacrifices anymore. But Jesus Christ already took care of that. And he gave his life and became the ultimate sacrifice. As people of God, we need to learn that we ought to give our sacrifice. Sacrifice isn't your money, although we should bring the time to store our as the Bible says. It isn't your attendance, although we ought to be in church every Sunday. That's not a sacrifice. The sacrifice the Lord expects every saint to bring to the church has come with them, is revealed in the last two verses of Psalms 100. We are told that we ought to bring a sacrifice of praise. Notice the emphasis of verse 4. Verse 4 tells us that we ought to do what? Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. Yeah. Notice a couple of quick things here in this verse. God's house is a place of praise to him. Yeah. We are given an invitation to come into his presence. We are told to enter his gates. Gates are defensive weapons usually closed with outer doors. Yeah. However, through the blood of Jesus Christ, we are no longer enemies to God. So these gates are open to us. And when we enter his gates, we ought to enter into his courts with praise. Note that we are not allowed to access the outer limits of his sanctuary unless we bring something along with us. No wonder the psalmist challenges us that when we enter his courts, we must enter it with thanksgiving. We must always be ready to give the sacrifice of praise. See here in verse 5, if you're wondering, I want to give a praise, but I don't know what I'm giving a praise for. We have a few reasons that we should give God praise found in the last clause of the text today. First thing, we ought to praise God for His goodness. We are told the Lord is good. And it seems like a limited description of God, but the word good doesn't just mean good. Good means pleasant, beautiful. Delightful, glad, joyful, precious, correct, and righteous. It also means expensive. Everything God does is good. We can praise our God because He is good. Regardless of what happens in our life, God is good. No matter how things turn out for us, God is still good. Therefore, we must always praise Him for His goodness. The next thing we see here in the text that we must praise him for his grace. We are told that God's mercy is everlasting. We can praise God because he is constantly extending his grace and mercy to us as we go throughout life. As mercy is defined as not getting what you deserve. We live in a time where everyone wants what's coming to them. But I can testify today, I don't want everything that I deserve. If I got what was coming to me, hell is where I would lift up my eyes. If you got what was coming to you, you wouldn't deserve to be here this morning. So I'm glad to say that I'm happy because of his grace and his mercy. God hold back the wrath off of our life. 2,000 years ago, his son Jesus took our place on an old rugged cross. While he was dying there, he was dying because he knew that he had to bear the sins of the world. When God saw him hanging there that day, he poured out his wrath on the person of his own darling son. So because of that, Jesus took the place of me so I don't have to worry about giving what it is that I truly deserve. You can sit here and pretend like you live the best life in your own to, but I thank God that I don't have to get what I deserve. The last thing here in church, and I'm out of here, I got two bridges across and get home. Praise God for his guarantee. We're told that God's truth 
endures to all generations. Yes. Simply stated that while the years pile up, not a single promise of God's word will fail. God cannot lie. Every promise that he has given us, it will come to pass. Yes. I heard no preacher say that God has a way with promises. Yes. Is that he keeps every one of them. Whatever it is that he tells you, church, you can count on it. When he tells you that he loves you, you can count on it. When he tells you that he will save you, you can count on it. When he tells you that he will take care of you, you can count on it. When he tells you that he's coming back one day to get you, you can count on it. I can count on Jesus to be everything I need. If you let your mind go back uh, over the years, uh, he's been everything uh, that I've needed him to be. Uh, he's been the road I'm sharing, uh, the city of the valley, uh, the pride and morning star. Uh, he's been my way out, uh, he's been my way over, uh, he's been my way through. Uh, if I call the road uh, right now, uh, a whole bunch of people in the Bible who can say that God was everything they needed him to be. He was Abraham's redeemer. He was Abel's vindicator. He was Noah's ark. He was Abraham's sacrifice. He was Moses' bush on fire. He was Ezekiel's will in the middle of the world. Gather in corporate places like this and give God praise. But we can. 
and take it for granted. He's been so good to us. You know, we woke up this morning one foot in front of the other. It might not be long steps, it might be a shuffle, but somebody could do that this morning. So my time. You got food in the refrigerator. Yes. I want McDonald's. You got bologna. <laughs> you gonna get full. Somebody ain't got bread. It's our job to give a joyful voice into the morning. Yes. Don't wait for the choir. Don't wait for the devotion. Bring your praise with you. Yes. Bring your praise. You bring your praise with you. I church for a whole lot of school. Doors of church is open. Maybe someone here today and you hear the word of God. Preach, I want to give my life to Christ. One of them life of Christ, I want to be active in the church. This is how we show God. This is how we show God we love him. We appreciate him. We help him with the upkeep and the building of his kingdom. And maybe someone here.
And in calendar it says we have Sister Katie Smith, Sister Emma Williams, and we have Mia.